I want to talk about learning loss. This seemed to be a question that resonated with some parents. Despite rankings being surprisingly good, some parents are still concerned about learning loss due to COVID and virtual learning and all that we've been having to deal with. How is the district dealing with uh, the potential learning loss for some students where it's greater than others? Well, as Chief mentioned, we didn't just start security measures, and the same would be true for our academic concerns. Um, when we began putting up those fences and secure vestibules a decade ago and have uh, secured that for all campuses now, the same is true for academics. Truthfully, it's not something you snap your finger or do overnight or in a short period of time. We've been building supports for academics uh, for, for a long time, and in particular, um, we have explored other districts that are successful and we don't believe in reinventing the wheel. We'll go out, find what someone's doing well. We actually, I took my team and we traveled to Nashville, Tennessee, found out about a CTE program that we thought might have an interest uh, to Goose Creek. And we implemented something called a school within a school. And it has turned into something phenomenal with three traditional high schools, three alternative high schools, uh, each of which now can host a, a, an academy uh, CTE Academy, which is a, basically a career pathway for students who may or may not choose to go to college. But so the learning loss that I'm referencing in a global way is connectivity with the students. We want our students to want to come to school. We want them to be connected to something. And of course, we have athletics and fine arts, but we were looking for other measures. And I would say that one of the things that has carried us through the pandemic outside of the, the stellar job that our teachers have done uh, implementing technology immediately is that the kids want to be here. They want to be a part of their programs that they've connected to. Um, but we are also known as a distinguished Apple school district and that didn't come overnight either. We began probably four or five years ago with a full scale implementation of a one to one um, technology for every student in the district. So we had done that four or five years ago before the pandemic got here. Our kids were accustomed to uh, using the technology for their lessons each and every day. Teachers were accustomed to teaching with technology each and every day, but there was that conversion to the remote instruction that we made. And honestly, that happened as we all know, for us in particular, the pandemic was announced over our spring break. Um, the good news is our chief technology officer is, officer is phenomenal. He brought in his crew during spring break, during their their break and uh, got his whole team together, got all of the technology that would be needed. Uh, our administrative team got together and hosted trainings for all of our administrators to partner up with this uh, technology team to be prepared to do a three day training for teachers on remote instruction. And every teacher in our district, more than 2000 probably were trained in a three day period of time, meaning we started instruction three days after spring break would normally have ended. Uh, so we didn't waste time getting the ball rolling on that. I think that helped us getting a, on the front end of the, uh, on the curve and then uh, having our students already acclimated to technology use has really been helpful. But I'll touch on just a couple more, that connectivity with the academies for the secondary student, something we've begun just a couple of years ago, we began exploring our early learning because Oftentimes, what we're trying to do in public education is close the learning gaps for students, close the opportunity gaps for students. And we think about that in terms of the secondary students and, and their academic performance and success on the state assessments and things of that nature. But uh, we've really turned our focus towards early learning. And we've uh, incorporated a curriculum program called Fueling Brains that will help support fidelity across the district in addition to instituting a play learn environment in our pre-K classrooms, which is really kind of cool. I can't explain it uh, adequately to you, but it is a children's museum quality experience that each child walks into one of 16 classrooms that are all designed differently and it draws their attention and they begin to increase their vocabulary just through exposure of playing in an environment that doesn't have student desks, doesn't have teacher's desks for that matter. Our teachers began to uh, facilitate um, differentiated learning across the room through learning and playing and learning that vocabulary. They might not learn about the wetlands until sixth grade, but as a four-year-old, they're living in the wetlands classroom and learning about uh, the ocean and brackish water and things of that nature. Sounds really so, exciting. 
I'm sorry, I could ramble on and on. But no, yes, no, no, do. it sounds really exciting. That's why you're talking so much about it. It's, it's, it's wonderful, it makes you wanna go back to school for folks like myself and right. experience a fun interactive classroom like that again.